Jim, in the midst of all the excitement here at the Heli Expo for 2010, it's time to take a look at the nitty gritty. The folks are out there in the trenches getting the work done as necessary. And let's face it, uh, in, the, in the helicopter industry, nothing turns without a blade. And especially when it comes to uh, looking at replacement technologies and substitute technologies for uh, manufacturers that have kind of gotten set in their ways and leaving room for companies like yourselves to build a better mousetrap. Uh, that's correct. Uh uh, there's a, a term that's been uh, coined over the years called legacy aircraft, and those tend to be the aircraft that uh, are either uh, out of production or, or the production has slowed down to the point where they might as well be out of production. And, and the OEMs, and rightfully so, really need to turn their attention to the future products. If they don't, their competition is going to eat them alive. And so now we have the legacy aircraft out there with probably not as many advocates within the companies that they need. They're solid aircraft, they have a loyal following, and for the most part, they need improvement. They've been around for an awful long time. Technology's moved on, and the product has sort of stayed still. Well, you've taken on one of the most revered airframes in the rotorcraft industry, the Mighty 206. And your first product uh, in that vein, uh, as far as replacement, as I understand, is a 206 tail rotor blade? The 206 began life as one of the competitors in the original light observation helicopter fly-off to provide a scout aircraft for Vietnam. And so the design is relatively dated. It's actually using 50s technology that was incorporated in the early 60s. And, uh, and since that time, needless to say, technology has moved on, both in materials and in aerodynamics. And the aircraft grew in both gross weight and size, going from the short cabins to the long cabins. But unfortunately, the tail rotor stayed the same. So it really needed an update. It needed a little more thrust back there. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. But well, we adopted a, uh, uh, a current airfoil, and airfoils take a while to develop. And in this case, it's a joint uh, Army-NASA development for a Rotorcraft series airfoil, and we've adopted that. That was a patented airfoil by NASA. The patent expired two years ago, and so it's in the public domain. And we've adopted that airfoil, and it's vastly superior to the older airfoil used on the Bell product. Primarily, it's superior in, uh, in stall. This airfoil happens to stall approximately at a 50% higher lift than the old airfoil, that makes a difference. Uh, also, the drag in this airfoil is less just because the shape of the airfoil is called laminar flow. It decreases the amount of turbulent flow over the blade and turbulence creates drag. It moves through the air smoother, makes a smaller hole in the air because it's thinner, and it uh, stalls at a much higher margin. So all that equals performance. What are you doing from the material side of the equation? Well, we went from a classic metallic honeycomb design into a modern carbon design. We're using uh, the same carbon that's used in the 787, by the way. And uh, we've, uh, we've adopted that with a very modern matrix, the glue that holds the fibers together. And so it's a graphite uh, titanium mix. So it's, it's, uh, it's the most current blend of materials. The, the 787 and 380 are both using titanium and, uh, and carbon mixes. A very good combination. I imagine that's an, uh, increased its strike and damage tolerance significantly. Uh, it has, it's a little more resilient. It's, it's tougher. A little rebound from a uh, strike, whereas a thin skin metallic blade will tend to dent. Now, what's your distribution uh, mode going to be for this particular part? Are you straight to an end user, or are you dealing with a distribution network? We're dealing with a distribution network, and we're finding that that is an interesting effort in that the optimum distributor would be one person who knew everyone on Earth with a helicopter, but that just doesn't happen. And so we're finding that, that for the most part, uh, service centers and the people who make decisions as to what parts go on a helicopter, they have a, a finite group of individuals that they're familiar with. And so the trick is finding these service centers and finding the, the, uh, the, uh, the appropriate coverage so that it overlaps and uh, so that all operators have access to the blades, or at least have knowledge of the blades, and then they can make the decision through the service center. If you own a Cirrus today or if you're considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low-time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite 
for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3 R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. The belt replacement world's been kind of a turbulent one because Bill has a very parochial view of their product line in some cases, but at the same time, the 206 is getting set off to the side a bit, much like the 47 not only got set off to the side, but ultimately separated. Well, what's your experience been as a vendor in a bell replacement world? It's a, a, a bell is a, is a very powerful name in the industry. There's a, there's a loyal following, and uh, they've been around for an awful long time. And so you, you fight a couple of battles. You fight the battle of, of brand loyalty. Uh, you, you fight the battle of, uh, of David and Goliath, and they're an ominous presence okay, in, in, the, in the industry. And as long as we adhere to the tenets that everybody needs to adhere to, and that is the guarding each other's intellectual property, you're fine. So the catch where it is, do whatever you need to do to the aircraft, but just don't steal their data. As long as you do things, just stand the straight and narrow, you're going to be fine. A bell's going to compete. You know, they're going to try and sell their product as we're going to try and sell ours. But uh, you keep everything above board and, and it'll work out fine. As I understand it, you're looking at uh, main rotor blade uh, replacement as well for the future? Uh, yes, we are. In fact, uh, the 206 uh, series, starting with the L, the Long Ranger, uh, that'll be first because it's the largest blade, the longest blade, and has the highest loads. And so we need the high loads to feed into the other structural testing that has to be done for a rotor blade. So we've launched that program. We announced it yesterday. We've already got some of the groundwork done. We're using the same airfoil that we use on the tail rotor blades, a vastly superior airfoil that's currently on the ship. And that'll be about a three-year development. And uh, it'll, it'll uh, increase the performance uh, dramatically on the aircraft, not from a speed standpoint, but from a, from a lifting at altitude standpoint. And finally, tell us a little bit more about your company. What else are you involved in at the present time? Well, we uh, primarily do rotor blades. That's our forte. And uh, we're looking at composite main rotor blade for the Model 500, uh, composite tail rotor blade for the Model 500, composite tail rotor blade for the Bell 212. That's in desperate need of uh, carbonization. So that's going to keep us busy for the next uh, probably five to seven years by the time all of these programs get into production. Nothing like staying busy, especially in this economy. No. No, it isn't. <laughs> Jim, thanks so much for your time. My pleasure. Appreciate it.